Remaining in the energy sector, the last unit of ESCOM's first mega project in 30 years has come on stream, but some say it is not cause for celebration. Midupi and Kusilia will be remembered, critics say, not for bringing power to South Africa, but for their abject lessons in poor leadership and questionable decision making, not to mention corruption for which South Africa will pay decades to come. ESCOM has announced that the construction of their Midupi power station in Lepalale the biggest dry cool, the most expensive power station in the world has been completed. So Midupi is about a 4,764 megawatt power bear moth whose uh, appetite for coal will increase, we're told, by 16 million tons a year. Professor Samson Mampueli is the director of the Center for Renewable and Sustainable Energy at the University of Stellenbosch. She joins us now. Very good evening to you, Prof, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So these figures, it sounds quite impressive if we think about what's coming on the grid, given the fact that we are energy constrained and we know the infrastructural problems that we've experienced here in South Africa that is kept the lights off. So there are two sides to the story. How do you see it and how should we be telling South Africans about this momentous occasion? Uh, good evening, Tepiso and the viewers. Um, it's a difficult one. Um, first, we need to commend ESCOM for bringing this uh, project this far. Um, I think the current management has done quite well. Um, in trying to resolve some of the issues that um, uh, Midupi had. We need to commend them for that. Um, as for the project itself, um, it's a big uh, waste of money um, that uh, we, we shouldn't repeat. Um, I was looking at um, this project, comparing it to building, say, for instance, um, a, a solar-powered uh, 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 farm. Uh, and I, I came to the conclusion that uh, this project was almost 30% more expensive than building a solar uh, farm. And if you look at the time that it took uh, and the budget overruns, it, 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 ta it tells you that this is something that we shouldn't uh, repeat in the near future. Mm. The other thing that we need to put into context is the fact that the, the, the plant is not 100% complete. It has reached commercial operation which then means that it's about 90% complete. There's the balance of the system where we still need to spend about close close to 15 billion rand to complete that part. So, Prof, just on that, as you mentioned, the cost, this has, uh, building started in 2007. We're looking at, what, 230 billion rand already. We mentioned at the start of the interview that it's the fourth largest coal-fired power station in the world. Yes, it's uh, the largest one that is dry cooled, but we already knew that we're le uh, leading towards a green economy. Uh, South Africa has been saying for a while that it's looking at building a mixed uh, energy infrastructure. Why was money not then put aside for that? Why are we still spending something that is going to cost so much on that's going to be coal fueled? Yes, that's the other issue. Um, the, the fact of the matter is that the, the, the plant, the construction of the plant, the designs and everything were already in place. And South Africa had already spent quite a lot of money on, on this project. So it, it was kind of a, a chicken and egg situation where if we had abandoned the project, uh, it would then mean that um, a, a lot of billions that we have, we have spent have gone, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the ocean, uh, which which basically means that the the, the, the fiscals, um, as you know, uh, most of the bailouts that were coming from government were covering the the, the cost overruns in in this particular project and other projects that uh, ESCOM was doing. So it would have been a huge loss if ESCOM did not salvage the situation. In the next uh, a few years. ESCOM is supposed to decommission about 11,000 uh, megawatts uh, of uh, coal fired fire power stations. So the, the coming of uh, Midupi uh, and Kusile online will basically replace part of, 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 uh, of that uh, capacity, uh, which is not uh, too bad because we're still going to be within the integrated resource plan uh, that, uh, that is guiding us in terms of energy provision. Mm. The other aspect is that the the, the 
Midubi is going to be fully operational maybe in the next two to three years. Now, that also depends on how ESCOM management handles the project going forward. Uh, our experience so far is that uh, ESCOM is under good management, so we hope that we don't have cost overruns on top of what we have um, already uh, um, uh, alluded to. So that's, that's the milestone that we, we, we're hoping to achieve with, with ESCOM going forward. But like I said in the beginning, we shouldn't be looking in this direction. The various interventions that, we, that, that are in place will bring online a lot of renewable energy and we may need to revise our integrated okay. resource plan in the next So let's years. talk about the NAR, uh, the NAR Prof. You mentioned that it will be 11,000 megawatts that will be decommissioned. I think uh, Midupi will account for 1,000 megawatts of that. For a country that has just become dispirited by constant load shedding, especially during winter, rising electricity costs. You said that's two to three years away. So what is it going to look like in the meanwhile? Um, in terms of the, 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 the electricity supply, the capacity and, and, and the demand, um, in the next two years, we can still expect load shedding um, unless some of the projects that... Um, uh, that, that, that will come from the, the, the supply of um, electricity to the various municipalities uh, that are considering to buy directly from IPPs come online quite quickly. Uh, we've got um, a number of other uh, developers who are developing up to 100 megawatts uh, projects as per the announcement by the, by the president. Those can come online in about a year or so. Uh, if we, if we're looking at renewable energy projects, and some of them are, are already at an, at an advanced stage. So things are not looking as good, but we are, th there's light at the end of the tunnel in terms of the, of the interventions that are in place. The challenge that we have is that in terms of the announcement by the president that uh, people who will generate up to 100 megawatts won't need generation license. We don't have the regulations as yet and those regulations need to be to be uh, uh, promulgated, and they need to. We, they still the department needs to still go through a public participation process. They still need to go through mm -hmm. to NEDLEC and all that. So the process is still going to take long. So the one year uh, we may be very optimistic if we talk about a year. Maybe load shedding will leave us in about two years from now. So I want to talk about those uh, purchase power, those power purchase agreements of the 27. I mean, a lot of the excitement was that if you can generate your own um, energy, you can then sell to municipalities or to the grid. And the questions were then asked, how would it be possible? Is there room for innovation now while the public-private uh, consultation participation is ongoing? Yes, there is, um, there is room for innovation. Um, ESCOM has also uh, uh, worked on, on a, a, a process, if they've streamlined a process for wheeling. Um, so in the past, when you, when you generate electricity and you want to sell to a third party other than ESCOM, it was quite difficult to connect through the grid. Uh, now ESCOM has, has, uh, has got a process that has been streamlined such that you can, you can be able to generate anywhere in South Africa and sell to anyone uh, anywhere in South Africa. So one can generate electricity from the Northern Cape and, and, and sell that electricity to a customer that's sitting in the Western Cape or Limpopo. So those kind of unbundling of, of, of the processes and streamlining of the processes will enable us to, to kind of see the light in the next two years or so. Thank you so much for sharing time and insights, Professor Samson Mankweli. He is the director of the Center for Renewable and Sustainable Energy at the University of Stellenbosch. Okay, so